Hey, what's going on YouTube family? This is your man Pristine back with another video. Welcome to the Pristine review for the iPhone XS Max. You guys know the order of business. Let's dive right into this thing. Now, the first thing I want to talk about really quickly is the price and the specs. We know that one of the most important specs being the price, the price for this guy right here, 1100 bucks. 64 gigs of storage, non, uh, non-expandable. Um, is it worth 1100? I mean, this is definitely a premium device. It's a premium feeling device and a premium looking device. But the fact that we live in a day and age nowadays where you can go and get a phone for way less than this, that is just as powerful, that looks and feels just as premium, that has really good cameras on the front and back, that's gonna deliver awesome performance, for way less money, way less money. <clears throat> uh, Pocophone <laughs> being one of those phones that I'm talking about. Little over $300 here, ladies and gents. Little over $300 here. Um, yeah, I can't say that the price is justified, man. Now, again, this is a really, really good phone. I mean, definitely the best iPhone to date. But 1100 bucks for the 64 gig variant. And there's only two sizes. I mean, there's a 64 and a 256 gig. So if you get the 256 gig, you're looking at 1250. Yeah. Yeah. I had to pause a moment on that one, y'all. <laughs> I had to pause a moment on that one, man. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that these, you know, these phones, you know, should not charge a premium price but i'm thinking like you know maybe you know seven eight hundred you know that would be more like it that's why i really feel like the iphone 10r is really going to be the phone to get and definitely stay tuned to pristine mobile text because at the 20 or on the 26th of october which is when that phone is released i will have that phone and i will be doing an unboxing so keep it locked here at pristine mobile tech that phone is starting off at 750 for the iphone 10r 749 nine, and nine. All right. That seems to be a little bit more like it. Well, we'll see. We'll see what that package is delivering. I know that they had to scale back a couple of things. Well, not necessarily, but I mean, as far as the build, you know, I hear that the screen isn't going to be, you know, the OLED panel, you know what I mean, that we've got here in the iPhone 10s, uh, 10X and the 10S Max. But who's to say? I mean, no one's seen the screen. I mean, you hear all these rumors and talking about all oh, the screen is going to be trash and it's going to look like this and look like that. Man, just get the phone in your hand and look at it for yourself. I'm pretty sure Apple ain't putting out no devices with a garbage screen, right? So we'll see. Definitely stay tuned. 26th of October, unboxing for the iPhone XR is going to be right here. All right. Now the build quality. As I mentioned, build quality, we've got a glass sandwich, uh, uh, sandwiched in between um, metal or aluminum and Apple has always used nothing but premium materials on their devices I mean so it's no surprise that the that the build quality on the phone is top-notch you know what I mean they got you know some of the best grade of glass that you can put on the device you know but still the key word I just said glass ladies and gentlemen this phone may be a little bit more durable than the iPhone 10 that came out last year when iPhone was like, oh, this is the, 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 the toughest grade of glass that you can get on a phone. And every drop test that I've seen for the iPhone 10X is shattered into pieces. Or it was just like, it looked like lightning on the front and the back of the phone. You know what I'm saying? With all the cracks and the, the spider cracks on the front and the back. I mean, it was hideous. You know what I mean? This may be a tad bit more durable. It may be able to withstand scuffs and drops, but the fact of the matter is it still is glass. Ladies and gentlemen, protect your investment. Get a screen protector. Get a case. You know what I mean? I'll drop a link in the description for this little case that I got on Amazon for like seven bucks. You know what I mean? You don't have to go and spend 40 bucks on, on, on some of these cases. You know what I mean? You can go right on Amazon and get yourself a nice case that's going to protect your investment, a nice screen protector that will also help you protect your investment. You don't have to go blow. You're already spending 1100 bucks on this one. Or if you decide to go with the 256 gig, you know, 1250 plus whatever the taxes may be, you don't need to go spend another 40, 50 bucks on a case, you know, protect your investment, but shop around because you can, you can definitely protect your investment at a much cheaper cost. All right. So build quality, build quality, solid, nothing but the best from Apple. I mean, we've come to expect that, you know what I mean? So that's no surprise. 
Now, performance. A12 Bionic chip, most powerful chip that's in uh, that's in a phone today. Apple is claiming. I would have to agree. Um, the, the the phone is it's a beast. I mean, the phone just absolutely flies with no lag at all whatsoever. Even trying, even while trying to get this phone to lag, it just simply will not. Gaming and everything is an absolute breeze on this particular device. I mean, we've got four gigs of RAM now on this device. I mean, which is the I think what this and the 10s are the first or the uh, yeah the yeah I'm sorry the iPhone 10s and the S Max here are the two iPhones to first come with four gigabytes of RAM. Now I know that last year the iPhone 10x it had three gigabytes. Before that, a lot of these iPhones were operating off of two gigabytes of RAM which is insane considering some of the benchmark scores and the fact that they were outperforming some of the Android devices that had processors in them that were known for being beast and, and offering stellar performance. I mean, so, you know, A12 Bionic chip, four gigs of RAM, man, you're getting awesome performance with this device. No lag, no stutters whatsoever. Everything is nice and smooth. And I do have to say, I have to agree with Jay, uh, Jay Will on this one. And I've let some of my buddies that are, that are just Android enthusiasts I can't even necessarily say Android enthusiast, but all they've had is Android devices, and so they're stuck on Android. And they have some of the more premium, more modern Android devices, some of the more modern technology, the more modern processors. So they're kind of used to how those phones perform. And then I put my iPhone XS Max in their hand, and they start breezing and scrolling around and opening applications and things. And they're just like, whoa, it just seems like a much more seamless, a much more smooth experience. And, you know, I have to agree with that. I would have to agree with that. The experience on iOS right now tends to be a little bit more of a buttery smooth experience than what you're going to find on some of the latest Android devices, some of the devices that have the Snapdragon 845 processor with 6 to 8 gigs of RAM and all that. I'm not saying that those phones aren't buttery smooth as well, but things just seem to be a tad bit smoother on these latest iOS devices, if I'm making sense. You know what I mean? That's just my opinion. You know. Um, but again, I'm not bashing, you know, uh, uh, Android and what they're doing with some of their latest software. Um, I'm just simply saying that the, the 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 overall experience, as far as performance, seems to be a tad bit more smooth on these phones here. You know what I mean? That's just my experience. Um, so you know, performance A plus, man, A plus. Now the cameras. Oh my God, the cameras. The cameras on this device are absolutely stellar. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the cameras because there is a dedicated camera review video that I've done. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you go to that. I'll drop the link in the description for that if you want to check that out. And definitely be sure to let me know what you think about the camera. Front of the camera, we got the 7 megapixel EyeSight uh, FaceTime camera, and it is absolutely magnificent. On the back of this device, we've got two 12 megapixel optical image stabilized sensors, one 12 megapixel primary sensor, the other one is a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and they take some awesome photos. Of course, you got all the bells and whistles, portrait mode, adjustable, uh, 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 you know, the adjustable portrait lighting effect, be able to control the blur effect, all that kind of thing, pro mode, all that kind of stuff, you know, just the typical 2018 stuff that comes on a premium device that you should be able to do with cameras. They are all here on the iPhone 10s Max. All right. So definitely uh, check that, you know, take a look at the video. Let me know what you guys think about the cameras. I'm very, very interested to see when the iPhone 10 R releases that has one 12 megapixel sensor. And I feel like the reason why Apple is releasing that one a little bit after the Pixel 3 XL comes out, which is this week, because that device also has one 12 megapixel lens. You know, Google is keeping it true to what they've been doing. They're like, hey, we're not we're not <laughs> we're not going with this dual camera setup. You know, what I'm saying we're known for having the best cameras in the game right now. We're doing it with all one lens. I really wonder if the iPhone 10 R and the fact that it has one lens is its attempt to really take on and go head to head with the new Google Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL. And I'm gonna have the Pixel 3 XL. I've decided I'm gonna get the XL. I don't care about what people are talking about, the notch, it looks hideous, it looks this, it looks that. I'm used to it, it doesn't bother me, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we all just have to adjust to the fact that we're living in notch city right now, man. It's notchness right now in the smartphone game. Okay, <laughs> you know, the essential phone started it, and, 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 and Apple dropped their rendition of it, and ever since then, everybody's been following suit.
You know what I'm saying? But we do have to give credit to where credit is due. Apple did not originate the notch. It was the essential phone. Okay? Essential. 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 Get that through you guys' heads. It was not Apple. It was the essential. All right? <laughs> Big ups to the essential phone and everybody that got that phone, man. That phone is dope. I don't care what nobody talking about. Now, um, so yeah, very interesting to see, you know what I'm saying, as I put those phones head to head with one another in the camera comparison. So definitely stay tuned for that because I'm also going to have that on pristine mobile tech. All right. Be sure to tune in so you guys don't miss that. All right. Now, battery life. For the battery, we've got a 3,174 milliamp hour battery. This is the biggest battery that has been in any iPhone. But it's interesting because it said, it is being said and rumored that the iPhone XR is supposed to have the best battery sustainability out of the iPhone XS, the XS Max here, and the XR. So again, we're having to play the waiting game until we get the XR in our hands to see if that is absolutely positively true. Now, I do have to say that although the battery on this device is good, my personal opinion, it's not as good as advertised. I'm finding that I am still having to put this phone on the charger every night. Okay, now again, as I've mentioned in several of my videos, I am more so of a moderate and light user. I don't go hard on my phones, man, unless when I'm just doing extensive testing just to test certain things. But aside from that, just my everyday, day-to-day -day usage. I talk on the phone, I text message, and I watch videos every now and then on YouTube from time to time. But I don't do that heavy. I'm not streaming mu uh, movies. And I stream, I stream music on Spotify. But that doesn't really fry your battery like some of the other media, media things that you can do that just kill your battery off. So the battery is decent. You know, will it get you through a full day? Yes, it will. OK, but it's going to leave you scrambling for a charger at the end of the day, at the end of the day. And if you're more of a user with your devices than I am, if you go heavy on your device than I do on mine, then you are definitely going to have to you know, keep a charger with you, keep some type of battery pack with you so that you will be able to juice up. You know, this phone is uh, 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 Qi enabled. I mean, so if you got a wireless charger or you're somewhere where they have wireless charging pads for you to lay your phone down, you will find yourself laying your phone down on one of those pads for extra juice and battery sustainability. OK, be mindful of that. This is not a big 4000 milliamp hour battery or, or more on this phone. Battery life is good. But me personally, I don't think that the battery life is as good as advertised. OK. Now, additional features on this particular device, um, because there's a few of them that I just want to talk about very, very briefly. Um, one of the main things that I like about this device is, you know, we've got Bluetooth 5.0 and a lot of the connectivity uh, 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 with this device uh, it, it seems like a lot of different things are integrated more so with iPhones than they are with Android. And so I find that a lot of a lot of times where connectivity can sometimes be an issue with Android, that seems to be a very, very seamless experience with the Apple devices. All right, y'all. So one of the main things that I'm just having an absolute blast with, and this may seem kind of silly, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not I'm not sure if this is something that everybody's going to use. But when you go into messaging, right, and I like the fact that when you're in your, in your text messaging, you've got all these different little options to choose from to send to people. So you can send people, you know, and you just add it as an attachment. But, you know, you can add stuff from photos. You can uh, send apps over. Um, of course, you can do digital touch, Apple Pay, send people money. Um, there's the an emoji images, music, you can send little snippets from songs from Spotify, things that you saw on eBay and just all that kind of stuff, right? But one of the main things that I seem to be really having a blast with is the Memoji. So here's my little character right here. And it seems like they've enhanced the front facing camera. So a lot of times when I am sending one of these to somebody, it's not it's not reading my face right now because my face, you know, the, the the camera is blocking the sensor. But it's very it's it's very dope how like, you know, 
just how it's capturing all your facial movements. I mean, just with your jaws and stuff. Like if you guys can see that in the left bottom corner, like smiling, you know, little little things that I'm doing with my eyes, blinking or just looking certain ways and just seeing my eyeballs moving around. You know what I mean? I mean, it's 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 a really cool little feature, man. You know what I'm saying? And I find myself having a lot of fun with it, right? <laughs> I mean, it may sound silly, but it's, it's, it's pretty dope. You know what I mean? In my personal opinion. I mean, so that's a little added little feature, you know what I'm saying, that I really, really am enjoying on the on the new iPhone. And I know that this is something that they implemented on, um, well, this particular aspect of it was not on the iPhone 10. Okay, so this is actually a new feature and it's called Memoji and this is on the iPhone 10s and the 10s Max. And so on the iPhone 10, you just had Animoji. You know what I mean? But you can create your little character and, you know, they've got all kind of different little things to really make your character look exactly like you. You know what I mean? And so I feel like this character, you know, he, you know, he's a he's a handsome little guy. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like Mr. Pristine in real life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing. And of course, I mean, you know, since that's in the messaging app, I mean, I got to mention iMessage, man. There's so many people that have iPhones and just so having the ability to have iMessage, it really it really makes the whole messaging experience just seem so much more seamless than what it is on than what it is on any other devices. You know what I mean? And I know that Android has made a big push to really try to compete with this by, you know, by by releasing, you know, what I'm saying their version, you know, of, of messages, the blue one. You know what I mean? And and it's cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can, you know, do voice text and everything like that. You know what I'm saying on that. But it still is not like what we experience here on the iPhone with iMessages and the voice text and everything. And 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 I, and I see that we're starting to see spinoffs of this. I noticed that on my Note 9, the Note 9, you have the ability to now to send voice text um, to everybody. And that's a cool feature. That's one thing that I like about the Note 9 because I know with, with voice text, you can only send voice text to other people that have iPhones, I believe. I don't believe you have the ability to send voice text to other people if they don't have iPhones. But I noticed that on the Note 9, you can send voice text to any and everybody. You can send voice text to people that have other Samsung devices or other Android devices. If they got an iPhone, you can send them a voice text. It does not matter. So I think that that's really, really, really cool. I really use that feature, especially like when I'm driving and I'm sending text messages. It's very hard to drive and send text messages and not take your eyes off of the road, which we all know can be extremely dangerous. And so I think that voice text is perfect for situations like that where you can just hold your thumb down on the little button, say what you need to say, send it off, and the other person gets it and they can listen to your voice and, you know, reply or, you know, whatever, keep the conversation going that way. I think, I think it's a much safer option. And, you know, a lot of times people spend loads and loads of time driving. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be just, you know, your commute back and forth to work, running little errands here and there, grocery store, the post office, you know what I'm saying? You know, picking up your lady or your man or just whatever you're doing, you know what I mean? And so, you know, that really, really is a feature that really comes in handy. Now, another thing that I like about the iPhone too, and this is something that we've seen on a lot of other devices, is when you swipe to the right, how it kind of gives you, um, it's like, like on Android devices, how it gives you like Google now, where you've got these different cards and the notifications, like some people don't like this, but I like how this is stacked up, right? So you can set this up to your liking, right? And at up top, you know, of course I got the Bible, you know what I'm saying? Because the good word comes before any and everything in my, in, in, in my world. Um, but then, you know, this is where I, I find out a lot of useful information about what's going on in the, in, in, you know, in, in the technology space. You see, I got, you know, Best Buy right there, you know, different little sales and things going on. The score, which I think is the best uh, the best sports app that there is ever invented. Um, you know, just all my scores and games. I keep, I'm able to keep up on everything that's happening with my teams. You know, the weather, a series suggested apps like Amazon. Like, you know, whenever I order something from Amazon, it's going to tell me, you know, when it's going to arrive. Like I got something that's arriving today. Um, but then one of the other things that I really like is this new feature or a new app called Screen Time. And what this does is it monitors the exact amount of time that you're on your device. And it will break down exactly what you're doing based on this little color code. And so you can see social networking is in dark blue. Then you've got reading and references in light blue. And then you've got productivity in orange. And when you click on that, then it takes you to the app and it gives you a graph. It gives you like a breakdown of everything that you've been doing on your device and how much time you spent doing what. 
You know what I mean? And then you could also set up little reminders to, you know, the, the app can give you reminders to put your phone down, give yourself a break, or you're spending too much time doing one thing. And so it would kind of, you know, force you to think, hey, okay, yeah, I am kind of going hard in the paint on texting or, or, or browsing the web or reading or just doing whatever. Maybe I should give it a break and do something else or just put the phone down altogether. You know what I mean? So I think that that is a really, really, really useful app. So like if you take a look right here, social networking. 56 minutes and this is all just so far this morning okay reading and references one minute productivity one minute you know what i mean and then it goes down into like it shows you like little graphs here messaging i mean i, I get tons of uh, tons of uh, uh, text messages you know um and it just really gives you a breakdown and and also breaks down like what you're getting notifications from you know what i mean so it's just like okay you know youtube the score facebook bible app YouTube studio, you know, it really, really helps you basically keep track of how you're using your device and what exactly it is that you're doing. You know what I mean? I think that that's a really cool feature to have. You know what I mean? Wireless charging. You know what I mean? When I pull out my wireless charger, if I set my phone down on it, you know, you heard the little noise. If I lock the device, let's see, let's go ahead and lock the device. Now, when I set the phone down on the wireless charger, okay, and then you see I got my Michael Myers wallpaper right there. I'll drop a link for that in the description, let you guys know how you can download that because that new Halloween starts showing tomorrow night. You know what I mean, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, what, today's what, the 16th? The movie comes out on the 18th, but I found that certain movie theaters on the day before a movie is released start showing it the night before. So... I'm definitely psyched about that. So that's why I've got my Halloween Michael Myers wallpapers on all of my devices, yo. You know what I mean? So like I said, I will drop a link in the description if you are interested in downloading that particular wallpaper. Now, another thing that I want to talk about really quickly too, Face ID. It's been said that with this in the 10s Max, or with the 10s, that the Face ID has gotten improved a little bit. I disagree. I disagree in a major way. I feel like the Face ID is as spotty and as inconsistent as it's ever been. And I feel like Face ID on this device, which is the 10s Max, has been more inconsistent than it was on my iPhone 10, uh, 10 last year. You know what I mean? Which is a problem. I find myself all the time having to enter my PIN code, which is right here, to unlock the device as opposed to just holding the phone up. Gentlemen, that is not necessarily a good look because I'm just like, yo, it's 2018. You know, the, 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 the technology should be spot on to where, hey, as soon as I hold my phone up to my face and it reads my eyes and my face, I understand they're saying that this is supposed to be the most secure face unlock. Um, but maybe it's too secure to where it's not even recognizing my face. <laughs> and my face ID is the only one that's in this device. I mean, so that, ladies and gentlemen, oftentimes can be a little bit of a bugger. I mean, it's not a determining factor that makes me want to put the phone down completely and just not use it because I think the phone is a great device overall, but it is a little annoyance. It does work, but it's not as consistent as it should be. OK, so definitely be mindful of that. And so those are just some of the features and functions uh, uh, that I like about the iPhone that I am really, really enjoying. And I think you guys would enjoy those things, too. Um, my overall final thoughts. Is this device a, gr a good device? Absolutely. It is a magnificent device and I'm really enjoying it. Typically, I get bored with iOS very quickly. I've had this phone since opening day. So it's been about, you know, three weeks now or something like that, that I've been really putting this phone through its paces. Um, and I'm still enjoying it as if I just got it. And that's saying a lot because I really, really get bored very fast with iOS devices. And there's nothing. I mean, it's still the same experience, but I think the fact that it is buttery smooth everything is nice and seamless the cameras are great i'm having a, a ball you know with the with the emojis you know what i'm saying i mean the, the the social networking app and just being able to look at you know uh you know what i'm doing with my device the most and being able to keep track of that the con the, uh, the the way that this phone just connects seamlessly to pretty much everything whether it be my cars or my sound bars and bluetooth devices that i got you know in my house my bluetooth devices that i wear in my ear to talk on the phone all those things just makes for a very, very seamless, buttery smooth experience. So as a collective, this phone is definitely 
at the top of the heap, in my personal opinion. You know what I mean? Um, I can't condone the pricing. That is something that I cannot and will not condone. The price is just too damn high, as my man Flossie Carter would say. The price is just too goddamn high. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I, I can't condone the prices. I mean, if you are wanting this particular device, I would wait for either the iPhone XR to come out. That's going to be out on the 26th of this month. Or if you want this one or the S, the, the regular 10S, which is the 5.8 um, 5.8 screen size, then you know, wait for a sale or something. There's all kind of promotions and things that are going on where you can get this phone a little bit cheaper. You know what I mean? But paying full price for this thing, it's not worth it, ladies and gentlemen, in my personal opinion. Is it a good device? Absolutely. But is it worth what it's asking, what, what the asking price is? No. No. In my personal opinion. You know, so who's this phone for? I mean, all you Apple fanboys and fangirls out there that want the latest and greatest Apple devices, this phone is for you. If you have the money, if you just got money just falling all out your ass, then, hey, it ain't nothing for you to buy yourself one of these. You know, some of you guys can afford to buy these things 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 times over, and it's nothing. That's like going and, you know, buying a candy bar in the store. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you got it like that financially, if you're that financially blessed, then, hey, you probably already got yourself one of these if you're an Apple, uh, if you're an Apple user. You know what I mean? Um... So that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to the full pristine review for the iPhone XS Max. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button. Live on that thumbs up button. Just move in and live on the thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. You know what I mean? To, to help support the Pristine Tech channel and to expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. Definitely keep it locked because I've got so much more content to come. You guys already know. Please hit that notification bell so that whenever I upload, you can be the first to view the content. Drop your questions, comments, feedback, anything that I may have missed in the video that you want me to cover. Drop that all down in the comment section and I'll definitely be sure to do my absolute best to accommodate you guys in future videos that I've got coming up for these devices. All right? So I'm going to close this thing out with my trademark, man. You already know. Cl please, stay safe. Please, because it's a crazy world that we're living in. Get spiritually fit, man. It's never too late. God is always willing to start over. You know what I mean? He's not the God of second chances, but he's the God of next chances. Because second chances, <laughs> we used that a long time ago, man. And I'm quoting my pastor, but I really appreciate when he says that because it's an eye-opener. God is always ready to start over, man. Get your life right with Christ, man. Get spiritually fit. We're definitely living in the last days. And man, keep it locked. Keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives, man. Get your swagger on. You know what I mean? Get your swagger right, man. Keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives, man. This is the iPhone XS Max. I'm your man, Pristine, bringing you the content. Peace, man. I'm out. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Yeah.